Welcome everybody. My name is Chris Alexander. I'm a librarian at the Saratoga Springs Public Library. Uh, we're delighted to um, be co-hosting the Southern Adirondack Audubon Society program tonight. Um, Hudson, the story of a river with Scott Stoner and Denise Hackett Stoner. And um, because we have so many people tonight, if you want to put your questions um, in the chat, and we will answer them at the end. And if we have any time left over after we do the chat questions, we will allow people to unmute yourself and ask your question at the end. So um, just a moment, and I'm going to turn it over to John Lowe's, who is the president of the Southern Adirondack Audubon. And John, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, from everyone from near and far. Uh, my name again is John Lowe's, president of Southern Adirondack Audubon Society. I am also chair of the Audubon New York uh, Council Board of Chapters around the state. Uh, this will be my fourth Zoom meeting webinar and then I'm running the council board meeting Thursday night and Friday night. It's been a busy week, I gotta tell you. <laughs> and we had our, our own chapter board meeting on Sunday. Um, but we've been getting so much done, a lot done. So I want to welcome everybody here um, uh, for this program. I'm going to just give a couple announcements. Uh, our next program is on the Audubon Bird Mural Project. Uh, uh, that is on the uh, in the Upper West Side of New York. Uh, I did take that walking tour two years ago. It seems like last year, but boy, this pandemic has really changed the meaning of time how to perceive it. Um, it was an awesome tour. You get to see all these different murals all around uh, the Upper West Side and visit uh, John James Audubon's cemetery um, plot. And it's a really a neat visual uh, type of program. So that is on Wednesday, May 26th at 7 p.m. Uh, that will be hosted by the Crandall Library next month. Uh, our, we are looking to uh, step our feet in the water as far as doing in-person bird walks. So we're going to try to start doing that in the summertime and then hopefully by the fall we'll be ready to do in-person bird walks. Um, and we're seeing how it works for in-person programs in the fall as well. Uh, so it's either going to be virtual or in-person starting in September. Um, we may have an impromptu uh, presentation during the summer, so keep your eyes out on our Facebook page and on our Instagram page and our website. Just a few things that our board has been doing over this pandemic, uh, just really been doing a lot of background work. We have approved to have our website updated. That will finally be updated this summer. We're really excited about it. Uh, and we hope that you'll check it out. Uh, we also approve to uh, sponsor an art exhibit at SUNY Adirondack next February through April in 2022 uh, on things, everything from extinct birds to glaciers to different uh, natural types of uh, themes. And uh, there'll be programming around that. So there's been a lot going on. There's too much to talk about. So I won't take up too much more time, but um, thank you for everybody who has supported us and continues to be a chapter supporter. If you wanna become a chapter supporter, you can go to our website, our homepage and uh, go to our membership page, or if you just wanna make a one-time donation, go to the top of our homepage to make that donation. It helps us with our education programs, our bird-friendly native plant gardens we're putting in this summer and early fall, three places, new, more news to come on that. So um, I'm gonna just do a introduction now to, with our, for our speakers or an introduction of our speakers. Um, I started getting into birding 10 years ago and with the, one of the first two people I've met in birding were Denise Heckard Stoner and Scott Stoner and and we've had them before speaking for us and we are so happy to have them back. Um, they are uh, award-winning nature, their award-winning nature photography 
and has been exhibited in galleries across New York's capital region, including solo exhibits at the William K. Stanford Library in Colony and inclusion in the 42nd Annual Photography Regional Select Exhibit at the Albany Center Gallery. Uh, they have, have appeared in numerous publications, including Birders World, National Wildlife, New York State Conservationists, the Albany Times Union, and in the books, New York Wildlife Viewing Guide, In Praise of Poison Ivy by Anita Sanchez, and Birding the Hudson Valley. They provided much of the photography for the new visitor center at the Five Rivers Environmental Education Center in Del Mar, New York, and serve as longtime judges of the Albany Pine Bushes Annual Photo Contest. They are avid birders as well as photographers and having served as officers, field trip leaders and directors for the Hudson Mohawk Bird Club. Please help me give them a warm welcome for Scott Stoner and Denise Packard Stoner. Hi. Um, so I'm Denise and, and this is Scott Stoner. And first of all, we'd like to thank uh, both John and Chris for your kind invitation to speak in your group this evening. We're very happy to be here. And um, this is Hudson, the story of a river. And I'm just gonna start sharing my screen here. So, from its origins, as a rocky stream in the high Adirondacks to its end at the southern tip of Manhattan, the river grows and changes. It has influenced life and civilization for tens of thousands of years. The river was called Mahicantuck by the Native Americans who relied on it much as we do today. They used it for trade, food source, and a waterway for enjoyment and um, also their own industry, their own form of industry. Uh, the word Mahicantuck means water that flows two ways. For almost half of its length, the river is a tidal estuary with incoming ocean water changing the direction of its flow on a daily and regular basis. So we also today use the river for very similar things, industry, enjoyment, and also nature study. It's a 315 mile long river. And although it was known to people for millennia before the Europeans uh, discovered it, um, it was found in 1524 by Giovanni de Verrazzano um, it wasn't really explored for almost 100 years later um, when Hen Henry Hudson explored it um, from um, New York Harbor up to Albany um, in 1609 on the Half Moon. We're going to be exploring the river from north to south today. Um, we're going to go from, we're going to look towards its source and then visit it and many of the cities that it passes by all the way south um, to where it flows into the harbor. So origins. Looking towards the source here, um, the source being Lake Tier of the Clouds, there high in the Adirondack Mountains on Mount Marcy, um, over 4,300 feet above sea level. Um, the river up there, um, right at its source, flowing out of the lake in little rivulets and streams, um, is known by various names like Feldspar Brook, Opalescent River, Calamity Brook, and others. Um, the river 
flows freely um, at that point and all the way down to Corinth, about a uh, hundred miles that it's, it's a free flowing river. Here, um, just south of the outlet of Henderson Lake um, in Newcomb, in the town of Newcomb, um, the river becomes actually known and called the Hudson River. This is a, a little um, trail in, into Hollis, Hollis Preserve, um, that the trail takes us right along that very upper Hudson River. Um, Tahawas was an old, um, it's a ghost town now, but it was um, an iron ore town, actually village in the town of Newcomb. Um, and we can, the preserve um, preserves these old um, blast iron furnaces. Um, and we can visit them and explore them. There's a number of them there. Um, it, this was run by the, a company called the Adirondack Iron and Steel Company back in the mid 1800s. And at that time, there actually was a dam in this part of the river. The dam was used um, to, um, the water was used to run the wheel that um, provided power for the blast cylinders in the, um, in the iron ore works. But those operations stopped around 1855 and in 1857, the dams were removed. So from that time forward, the river up there has been free flowing. All along the river, the banks of the river, from this very northern um, beginning part of the Hudson River, really all the way down to the lower Hudson Valley, um, there are ample opportunities to enjoy the wildlife along the river. There's lots of river access and riverside access and lots of things to see. Um, we, we came across a lot of monarchs and um, other butterflies while we were exploring up there. And so um, we took the opportunity to put in a, a little collage of the life cycle of the monarch butterfly from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to adult. Here's a tiger swallowtail. Lots of beautiful things to see up there. And the forest tent caterpillar which eats a lot of the trees or parts of the trees. So um, all along the river, um, towns built along the river depend on the river for, for their source of their economy. Um, that's true down in the indu industrial part of the river. And it's also true in the Northern free flowing part of the river. Um, this is the town of Newcomb, um, which depends a lot on tourism, river enjoyment, recreation, um, places like uh, Cloud Splitter Outfitters here in Newcomb, which is located right next to the river, right on the river. They, they rent kayaks there. They have a little outfitting shop where adventurers can get any supplies they might need for the day out enjoying the river. And of course, the ice cream shops and um, ski resorts as we see a little bit of uh, artifact there. Um, from the other season. Uh, rafting is also a great source uh, for their economy. Um, here in North River and North Creek, we see people enjoying the river on many of the, um, many of the rafting companies um, that thrive up here in the uh, Northern part of the Hudson. This is the river around North Creek. And it's beautiful up here any, during any season, any time of year, winter, spring, summer, fall. The historic railroad station in North Creek um, is really just a museum now, um, but it enjoyed um, 
a long period of activity. And back in 1901, um, while on a family trip camping at Mount Marcy, uh, Theodore Roosevelt got a message that President McKinley was gravely wounded after being shot in Buffalo. So Roosevelt was rushed to North, the North Creek train station by a series of stagecoaches. And there he was informed that the president had died. So it was on one of these trains that um, Roosevelt was taken from North Creek to Buffalo where he was sworn in as president. This is the nearby town of Red Perius. And down into Warrensburg. And here in Warrensburg, um, we'll see one of the, the first um, major tributaries joining the Hudson River and increasing its volume considerably. Um, we're looking here in front, right in front of us, we're on the bank of the Hudson, but across the river and coming in from the side here, this is the Scroon. So this is where the Scroon River comes in and joins the Hudson. This picture is, uh, was taken at the actually narrowest point of the Hudson River. Um, on the left, we have Hadley in um, Saratoga County. And on the, I'm sorry, on the left we have, yeah, yeah Hadley. And, and on the right, we have Lake Luzerne. So um, two counties very close together. This is Warren County. Um, and the waterfall that you see here is Rockwell Falls. And this again is the narrowest point of the Hudson River. Here, another big tributary joins the Hudson and we're actually looking at it. Um, we took this picture standing um, up on a bridge called the Hadley Bow Bridge, that historic bridge that many of you may have seen as well. Um, we're looking, so we're looking down on the Sacandaga River here. This is the Sacandaga flowing, it's flowing away from us and it's flowing into the Hudson. So this is the second major tributary joining the Hudson River, greatly increasing its volume. And Lake Luzerne just in Warren County, um, like many of the towns that I've already mentioned also uh, derives a lot of benefit from, from the river, depend, as you can see by the upriver cafe, Whitewater Way. Um, they depend a lot on the river for, for their economy. Um, these are just a few scenes from Lake Luzerne. Um, up here on the top left, we see the Adirondack uh, Folk School, which is very famous for preserving many of the folkways um, of the, the Adirondacks and our arts and crafts of the region. An old time mobile station out of use right now, but um, interesting to see. And the only remaining part of one of the old tanneries there on a creek that flows into the Hudson. Um, um, and then we are at Corinth Park and Beach. Of course, we're not really going to lay on still a very interesting place to see. And just behind us, um, like just down river from here is the very first dam on the Hudson River at Corinth. And again, um, nature is never far away, right on the riverbank. Um, and then we're going to um, down to the town of Moreau. This is Spear Falls Road in Moreau with um, one of the first big dams for hydroelectric power um, run by Brookfield Power. So enterprise is not just human activity. Uh, birds and other wildlife also use the river um, to their advantage. Um, and the river bank. Here we have vireo's nest, probably a red-eyed vireo. They're, they're known to use a lot of birch bark on the outside of their nests. And just down river a little ways from that um, 
from that hydroelectric power dam is another beautiful little uh, beach of boat put in right there at Spear, Spear Falls Road. Very scenic little kayak launching place. Of course, lumber has always been um, a very important industry in the Adirondacks. And we know that um, originally the, the lumber was floated down the river. Um, so the river was used as to transport the lumber. Um, of course, that's we use trucks now, but um, the lumber still ends up in the lumber industry. So here at Glens Falls, this is the paper mill called Finch Prime. Um, it was started in 1865 as a logging business. Um, they started making paper in 1904. Um, and of course the river was important both for getting the logs to the paper mill and for getting the product to Albany and New York City. There's Fort Edward. A little bit, just a little bit down river. And a reminder um, to fisher, fishermen along the way that um, because of toxins in the water, um, the fish are not um, edible. So it's catch and release only. Um, near Fort Edward, there's a canal, a feeder canal um, which connects and supplies water um, to the Champlain Canal. Um, and the Champlain Canal connects the Hudson River with Lake Champlain. So um, along this feeder canal is, is another great place to explore for wildlife. Um, we have a rusty blackbird here and a green heron. Edward. Um, Fort Edward grasslands are very important area for, for grassland birds, including the short-eared owls that um, people like us um, enjoy all winter long. Another good grassland area is, Sat is Saratoga Battlefield. Um, good place to go for history as well as um, nature. And see birds like this bobolink. And there's a school there um, in Stillwater, Saratoga County, with um, a beautiful trail that goes out into the marshy part of the Hudson River. And it's a good place to explore. Here we have uh, some skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage can uh, create its own heat. So um, the flower comes up and actually can melt the snow and ice and come up very, very early in the spring, late winter. Put in Merganser. Blockhouse Park, also in Stillwater, is a, a, a nice place to uh, check out the river for some, some waterfowl and also birds flying overhead. It's a, often a good place to see nighthawks, common nighthawks. Uh, also in Saratoga County, the Anthony Kill um, is another good sized stream that um, drains uh, Round Lake and eventually meets up with the Hudson River in Mechanicville. It's a beautiful place to, uh, to canoe, kayak, and enjoy the birds and wildlife along the way. In the town of Half Moon on the Champlain Canal, um, we often see osprey there building nests. A little bit farther down river in Cohoes in Albany County, um, we have the famous Cohoes Falls. Um, this is where just a little bit um, farther down from Cohoes Falls um, is where the Mohawk River, one of the largest tributary, uh, joins the Hudson. So, um, this is uh, one of the bridges. There are two or two bridges that span um, the Mohawk here. And um, the Mohawk splits into three parts as it goes around People's Island and Van Skyke Island. Um, 
and then it flows into the Hudson River. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Scott here to talk about transitions. Well, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Denise. Okay, so at this point, we are in Troy. We're 153 miles to go um, down to the mouth in New York City. And this is a really important point in the, in the life of the river. This is the, this is the point that it transitions to a tidal river. So the tidal portion of the river is south of here. And it's a 153 mile long estuary, the Hudson River estuary below here. And you know, in the tidal portion, it runs, you know, Denise mentioned that, that the river, it's a river that flows both ways or, or flows two ways. So it runs north for six hours and then south for six hours. And the highest tides in the river are at Albany because the Hudson is more narrow there and, and the water is forced higher. The tides in Albany are about six feet. In contrast, the high, high tide in Newburgh is, is only three feet. And the tides are very, very important as we have personally learned when going paddling on the river, which we, that we really love to do. Yeah. So use the term uh, estuary here, and these, these signs are from the uh, Hudson River Estuary Program, and, and these are um, all up and down the, the tidal portion of, of the river, of uh, whether river or tributaries crosses the roads, or the roads cross it. So an estuary is where the river meets the sea, and it's also typically where salt water and fresh water meet. So at some, at some point between Troy and New York City, the river, the river changes from freshwater to saltwater. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The fish shown on here is the sturgeon. It's an endangered species and a symbol of the Hudson River. And it's, it's born in freshwater, goes out and lives in the ocean and comes back to the river every year to spawn. So with that introduction to the tidal portion, let's resume our journey south. Here the river is, is passing Albany, uh, the state capital. And this is a pedestrian bridge over Interstate 787 in, in Albany, and it reconnects people to the river. This was built about 20 years ago. There's a lot of interest in these waterfront communities of reconnecting people to, to, to the river, uh, providing um, providing access to them that, in the case in Albany, 787 kind of cut the city off from the river. Also happy to note that there's another access, a new linear park in Albany that will be open in about another year. So, so the river is, is beautiful along the shores of, of Albany, the Corning Preserve from, from the fall to the various moods of the, of the river and on a misty winter day. Uh, sometimes it freezes, sometimes it floods. But the river is, is always interesting, always changing, always beautiful. There's wildlife along the, wildlife as well as city life along the edges in Albany, which is a fever activity at the Corning Preserve. And it's also, uh, so starting, starting in about Albany, with the port of Albany, the, the, the river becomes a working river for large shipping. And there's large, many hundred foot long ocean vessels, ocean going vessels going, they're transporting manufactured goods from the capital region south and bringing goods um, up from, over, from overseas. But there's also a lot of natural beauty as, as well as you, as you go south of, of the port of Albany, kind of, kind of interspersed. In Southern Albany County, um, Henry Hudson Park in Selkirk. Again, uh, 
uh, named and commemorates the arrival of, of Henry Hudson's Half Moon in 1609. It's a good place to look for birds, place to have a, a summer picnic by the river. And town's kind of small and medium sized as, as well. This is Castleton in Rensselaer County, kind of across from Henry Hudson Park. And a view of the river from Castleton. And a little farther south, this is Skodak Island State Park in Rensselaer County, where both the railroad and the Berkshire Spur of the New York State Thruway cross the river. You can launch a boat here in uh, Skodak Island and look for birds such as the oven bird, this, this warbler here, and, uh, and, and eastern bluebirds, the New York State bird. Just south of there, a nature conservancy preserve, the Lewis Swire Preserve at Mill Creek Marsh. This is now in, we're now in Columbia County. The whale service is a constant presence along the, the east side of, of the river. And this is, photo is in Columbia County, but, but again, it, the, the railroad, railroad runs from, from Rensselaer down to and down to uh, New York City. And in Stuyvesant in Columbia County, this, this, is, this old railroad station is now a, a farmer's market, but active rail service continues uh, to pass by here. Just um, looking at a couple of uses of, of water along the river, additional ones that, that we didn't mention earlier. This is an old ice house at a place called Nutton Hook in Columbia County. And the ice was, well, huge blocks of river ice were, were sawed up and stored in these ice houses like this and, and then shipped to New York City. It was, this is the days before refrigeration. And you know, ice was stored in here in sawdust and hunks of ice could keep for three years without melting. Water also used for, for firefighting. And there's a lot of places to explore the river um, by boat as, as, as well. You can launch, launch a canoe or kayak at Stockport kind of over here on the shore and paddle out to the Hudson River Islands State Park and look for wildlife such as the white-tailed deer. And, and note the plants both native such as the uh, cattail and non-native such as the phagmites. And we're always curious about but all of these plants with arrow-shaped leaves, and some of them are exposed at low tide and and un, at least partially submerged at um, at higher tide. There's just there's a there's a lot of interesting plants along the river, and, and you know these are from Stockport, but it's a uh, it's kind of representative of of that portion of the river. Bald eagles can be seen really up, up and down the river. You can often see them from, from the train or, or from a boat or from various vantage points along the river. And they, they nest along the river. They, they nest, there's one nest that can be seen or at, um, from Henry Hudson Park and, and many other places uh, there are nests. Kind of less, less showy are the, um, are, are these, of bank swallows that, that nest in cavities, like whole colonies of cavities in, in sandbanks. This is at the Hudson River Islands State Park. And a 
nice variety of, of butterflies along the river as well, including the monarch shown in the center here. And dragonflies and damselflies, damselflies shown, shown here. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of nature along the river, all, all along the river. Uh, in Hudson, in, in, Hudson, in Hudson, uh, the uh, Henry Hudson, uh, and a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, use of the name there, um, picture of, of the half moon, uh, Henry Hudson Waterfront Park in the city of Hudson. And there are, I, as I understand it, seven lighthouses along the river and the Statue of Liberty also uh, was lit at, uh, counted as a lighthouse at one point. This is the one that's farthest north, the Hudson Athens light seen from the city of Hudson. And in the, in Catskill, the small city of Catskill, a village I think it is, we have the Thomas Cole National Historic Site. And Thomas Cole was the founder of the famous Hudson River School of Art, a group of landscape painters influenced by the Romantic movement, and they painted idealized scenes with little or no human influence. And this is an example of uh, one of Thomas Cole's paintings. This, is, this one is called A View of Two Lakes and Mountain House, Catskill Mountains. This one's unusual because it has both a building and a person, the artist himself, uh, in it. But this type of scene is otherwise very typical of the Hudson River School. And that's Thomas Cole's studio at the, Cole, at the Thomas Cole House. And across the Hudson from, from Catskill, from the Thomas Cole House, uh, this is um, Alana, it's now a state historic site. And this is the home of Frederick Church part of the Hudson River School, a student of Thomas Cole. And the view that he probably painted, I mean, he did many of his paintings there at, uh, at Alana, or Frederick Church did. And you know, again, again, that's part of this whole Hudson River School of, of painting, of, of, of painters. And this Hudson River School, and this is really an important environmental point, the Hudson River School spread across the nation, inspiring artists across the nation, such as uh, Thomas Moran. And Thomas Moran's work was instrumental in the preservation of the great parks of the West, including Grand Canyon and, and Yellowstone. This actually is a sign that we took uh, in, we took a picture of in uh, Grand Canyon National Park. So this, so this movement, this artist school, started in uh, right there along the Hudson River and again spread across the country and led to the preservation of these major parks in, in the West. Collect, uh, I'm sorry, connecting Catskill and Alana, the Rip Van Winkle Bridge in, uh, across the Hudson, they added um, on the right side of it here, a, a skywalk. Uh, with a view with a viewing point so and there's a trail now from Thomas Cole house all the way to to Alana I think it's about two and a half miles includes a, a bit of elevation change here and the peregrine falcons are often seen here they often nest in the bridges over the river uh, we, we did see one there birding particularly Looking for waterfowl on a cold day, late winter, is a always a fun activity along, along the river. And I know a few people in the audience are uh, are in this picture. I won't name them. Um, looking for birds like the ring-necked duck in here in the Hudson. And and. And there's a lot of amphibians in the Hudson River Valley as, as, as well. 
uh, bullfrog, American toad, green frog, and spotted salamander. And there's a major effort, it's run by the uh, Hudson River Estuary Program to monitor the, for these salamanders and other amphibians as they cross the loads on warm rainy nights in early spring to make their way from the woods to temporary vernal ponds to lay their eggs. And the volunteers go out and help them, help them cross. And we're uh, pleased to be a, a part, of, part of that effort. Uh, So down in um, in Columbia in Columbia County, here the, there's a state historic site called Claremont, and it's the home of Robert Livingston, who worked with Robert Fulton to create the first uh, successful commercially successful steamboat on the Hudson River, and that's that's a just a fall scene there at, at Claremont. And here's a summer photo from Claremont in 2012. You may have heard about the cicadas, the brood 10, 17 year cicadas coming to the, to the Northeast of uh, this. And actually in, a, in, in a, about three weeks. And those are not gonna actually make it much into New York, those little holes farther south. But, but this brood of 17 year cicadas came up as far as Columbia County in 2012, or they, 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 lived, they, they, they lived there. And <clears throat> we saw and heard these at, um, at Claremont and the cicadas were absolutely everywhere. And it sounded like uh, a jet aircraft would take off. It was very, very, very loud and very interesting. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is um, the next lighthouse down. This is in Saugerties. The Saugerties light. And at Tivoli Bay's wildlife management area, there's a long ramp for, for uh, bringing your uh, uh, canoe or kayak down to the river and, and going out and seeing scenes like this in uh, Tivoli Bay's. Go out and look for birds like this great egret, bird of the marshes and, and bays along the river. In Kingston, in Ulster County, uh, the, this is the um, Rondout Creek, one of the kind of medium sized tributaries of the river. And that's the Rondout Light where the where the river, where the creek joins, joins the river. We're looking here north up, up river. And then a bit farther south, there's the Sopus Meadows light, Lighthouse, both seen from the water and, and from land, kind of an iconic uh, view there, popular view. Uh, the first wine region in the U.S. was actually right there in the Hudson Valley, uh, down in uh, Ulster County. Norrie Point State Park in Statsburg, Dutchess County. Our friend's kayak shop there, closing up for the summer, for the, for the fall. And some some interesting historic things in, uh, in Dutchess County, things like the Vanderbilt Mansion in, in Hyde Park with its beautiful view of the river. And in Hyde Park at the home of uh, President uh, FDR. And the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America where the public can, can go and eat. And we did, and it's very good, by the way. Um, so near, um, uh, rather at, at Poughkeepsie, or crossing the river from Poughkeepsie, is the um, walkway over the Hudson State Historic Park. It's a converted uh, railroad bridge, and it's now, uh, it's now a New York State Park. It's a, maybe a mile and a half 
across. It's a beautiful, uh, interesting walk. Great views of, of the river, such as this view of Poughkeepsie looking down uh, downtown in the direction. I'm sorry, looking looking at downtown Poughkeepsie and looking south south along the river uh, from from the walkway. So the the second section and last section that I'm going to talk about, we call it expansion. And this covers the Hudson Highlands from Newburgh Bay, which is the wide part of the Hudson River at Newburgh near the I-84 bridge, down to the widest part of the Hudson at Haverstraw. And notice, notice the mountains and the, uh, th this is the Hudson Highlands here. And the Hudson River in this area, it's actually a fjord. It's carved by glaciers and part of the lower Hudson River is actually deeper than the mouth of it. And the Hudson Highlands is the only spot where there's a sea level breach in the Appalachian Mountains. So it's a water passage uh, through the Appalachians. And it gave engineers in the 1800s, an opportunity to create a passage from the Atlantic up the Hudson and then west along the Erie Canal to the Great Lakes, allowing trade from the ocean to the heartland. And this made New York the Empire State. I mentioned the salt water front or, or the salt, salt water earlier. Uh, so in this area of, of the river, and we're looking at uh, Newburgh here, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the salt water from the ocean is moving north and fresh water from the Adirondacks and, and other places is, is moving down. And the salt front is where they meet. And that salt front usually is between Newburgh and Terrytown, but if it's very dry, it can extend north up to Poughkeepsie and it can also extend um, it can also be down um, around Manhattan. So again, the, so the salt, the salt front, it's it it varies from year to year, and it's where the ocean and fresh waters meet in the tidal estuary. So a lot is happening in this part of part of the river. And we wanted to talk a little more about the environmental history of of the river. And the Hudson is integrally involved in the history of the environmental movement in this country. And we're now looking at uh, Beacon uh, in Dutchess County on the east side of the river. And we all remember Pete Seeger, right? His music, his movement. Well, in 1966, Pete Seeger decided to build a boat to save the river. And he and they built the 106 foot sloop Clearwater which has since sailed up and down the river from New York to Albany with environmental education, hands-on sailing opportunities and, and, and music. And he founded the Beacon Sloop Club, which continues his conservation efforts and sails the sister ship to the Clearwater, the Woody Guthrie, shown, shown here. An um, another uh, near, nearby, um, is on the um, on the west side is uh, Storm King Mountain here in, in Orange County, a little bit south of Beacon. And this is another big piece of the birth of the of, of the environmental movement. And so and it was also involved it, it also was the birth of the group Scenic Hudson. So in the in the early 60s there was a proposal to build a power plant on Storm King Mountain, shown here. And citizens, and so there was a huge storm over Storm King, so to speak, and citizens banded together to fight the power plant and they won. And this has been cited as the birthplace of the environmental movement in the United States. So just a view of uh, Storm King Highway along Storm King Mountain. And this peak here is called Breakneck Ridge, and it's part of Hudson Highland State Park. And, and so the so Breakneck, Breakneck Ridge 
together with Storm King, forms what they call the Wind Gate, which is the northern entrance to the Hudson Highlands. And that, and that ties in with, with that uh, sea level passage that, that we talked about a few minutes ago. In the small, um, I'm not sure if it's a, I think it's a village of Cold Spring on the east side of the river. It just, it just shows the town not, dis, not disconnected, or a town nicely connected to its waterfront, to its river. And just a couple signs in Cold Spring that highlight the, how, how the, the river and the town are integrally connected in terms of both life and, uh, and commerce. So the, the deepest, Denise talked about the narrowest part. Uh, the deepest part of the river is more than 200 feet deep. It's near West Point, also near the, uh, kind of shown here, the, uh, um, I'm sorry, Constitution Marsh Audubon Center. Again, it's a, it's a little over 200 feet deep. And that is West Point, the, uh, the military academy. There. And then we have Bear, uh, Bear Mountain and the Bear Mountain Bridge, which is the third bridge shown here, crossing between Bear Mountains kind of on the right out of view here and, and Anthony's nose. And the Bear Mountain Bridge is, is interesting. If, if you look at this little white uh, rectangle here, the, Ap um, the Appalachian Trail actually runs along the Bear Mountain Bridge. And a view from it, looking south, Doodletown Road, part of, the, part of Bear Mountain State Park, is a great, great birding area. Scarlet Tanager shown here. Iona Island here, also part of the park. Another good birding spot. And in Westchester County here, this is the Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant. Uh, so more environmental history of, of, of the river. Um, pressure from environmental groups and, and, the, and the governor's office in New York the facility is, when I wrote this, is that it's slated to be shut down in 2021. And what we could find online today, it is supposedly uh, still slated to be or has been shut down uh, this month in, in, in April. The last, my last piece here, the Stony Point Lighthouse is the oldest lighthouse on, on the river built in 1826 and a, and a view uh, a view from from the stony point uh, battlefield area so we've got a few minutes left here and a, one more section to cover hope you bear with us as denise uh, wraps it up i'm going to turn it back over to her and she'll talk about the last section of, of the river Okay, conclusions. Uh, the, we've been talking about uh, milestones in the river. This is the widest point of the river at Havistraw Bay. It's uh, three and a half miles wide here. Nice river boat there on the bay. And the beautiful Croton Point County Park. This is a a beautiful park, Riverside Park, um, has a nice grassland where you can enjoy some bird watching with this uh, killdeer. And another one of the cities along the river, uh, this is Ossining with its bustling downtown and of course it's famous prison. And here in Sleepy Hollow, the beautiful historic Phillips Manor Metro North Station. It's a beautiful historic um, railroad station with this very ordinary looking pedestrian uh, bridge going over the tracks. But inside that uh, very ordinary looking bridge is a remarkable stained glass window, a series of stained glass windows with beautiful um, picture of the river running through it and the tributaries. 
and um, inscribed in right on the river is a, a beautiful haiku written by uh, Joseph Cavallari. A gentle Hudson whistle begins my journey north and south and home. It's a beautiful place. And of course, Sleepy Hollow and Terrytown themselves are really great riverside uh, places to visit, especially in the fall. Um, not surprisingly, Halloween is huge in Sleepy Hollow. Um, and we were lucky enough to be there in October and enjoyed all of the festivities. Um, here is a pretty cool sculpture of the um, Headless Ho Horseman and the famous legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, and we can visit um, Sunnyside, the home of Washington Irving, author of the legend, and even visit his family gravesite. Uh, this is the uh, Sleepy Hollow Lighthouse. It's a tiny lighthouse. Um, and right behind it, we can see, we actually can see two bridges here. The one in the back that's partially dismantled was the old Tappan Zee Bridge. And of course, the new um, rendition of it, the Mario M. Cuomo Bridge there in the foreground. And looking over, looking down and over um, the town of Piermont, um, Piermont is a really interesting place. They have a, a beautiful Hudson River marsh here. Um, and in addition to the marsh, there is the pier, uh, Piermont Pier, 4,000 feet long. Originally, it served as the terminus for the old Erie Railroad. And passengers would get off at the, at the end of the pier. They'd get off the train and immediately board boats that would take them into New York, New York City. During World War II, when it became the place for GIs to um, get off the train and onto their uh, troop ships, it became known as Last Stop USA. But today, you can stroll out to the middle of the Hudson River on dry land here and enjoy the views or go fishing from the end of the pier. Looking across to the Palisades, this is um, so we're we're in. Um, Let's see, Hastings on Hudson, New York, and we're looking across to New Jersey um, at the Palisades. Uh, so the Palisades are a basalt cliff um, spanning, they're, they're from 300 to 540 feet, forming almost a canyon there in the lower Hudson Valley. Um, this picture was taken from State Line Lookout, which is the highest point on the Palisades Cliffs. Um, it's about a half mile south of the New Jersey, New York line in Alpine, New Jersey. It's got its own exit and everything. Um, the uh, State Line Lookout is a, a good place um, for hawk watching in the fall. And this beautiful uh, round um, visitor center uh, was built in 1937 by the WPA. It's got two fireplaces inside. It's open all year. Uh, great place to, to go. You can see um, Peregrine Falcons right outside that light, that um, visitor center uh, right along the river. Um, and here we're looking across, um, across the Palisades um, Parkway towards Yonkers, New York. And the insert kind of shows a nice redevelopment of the uh, Yonkers uh, waterfront. It would be kind of nice if Albany could do something like that. Um, and all along the Palisades Parkway, there are a lot of you know pullouts and overlooks, and all a lot of them have access to uh, the Long Path, which starts at the George Washington Bridge and goes all the way to Thatcher Park. We're looking towards the bridge and towards uh, lower Manhattan or towards Manhattan there. And from a distance here, we can see um, we can see the, the very end of the river. So this is um, this is where it goes down to lower Manhattan and, and into the, uh, the harbor there. Flowing past the busiest city in the world. And looking back at the river now from the harbor, 
seeing where it ends up. Uh, right out into the harbor, we, we come to, of course, Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty, where we end our journey on the Hudson at the point, um, which was the beginning of its first European exploration, New York Harbor. And of course, this point was also the beginning of many an immigrant's American experience. The river's beauty and strength, the variety of its habitats and inhabitants, its usefulness and industry make the, make the Hudson River mighty and precious. May it forever run. And with that, we want to thank you for having us once again.